this toy was a roller coaster, let me tell you. Well, technically, it's a big Cybertronian truck, a big refrigerator on wheels, but I'm speaking metaphorically here, try and keep up. I remember the renders coming out and going, oh, that looks nice, those big gaps in the thighs are a shame, but he's so swole. You know, that's a big lad right there. Then I saw the actual production photos, which seemed to be doing everything they could to tell me Optimus here was trading solid stability for flimsy, hollow plastic, giving him the look of a bodybuilder, but the strength of a little weasel, like me. So I wasn't sure if I fancied it, and then we started to see those in-hand images coming through from the review channels. I don't know how they get these toys so early, I'm sure it's all above board, but it was then that I felt there was enough of a middle ground here to give the lad a shot, and I'm really glad that I did, because honestly, there are moments when Optimus here does feel a little bit fragile, but for say 90% of the time, he's a surprisingly heavy wee powerhouse. So from a design perspective, this guy's based on the War for Cybertron games that came out a few years ago. I'm not the biggest fan of the aesthetic, but I do think it translates to a decent looking toy here. I love his tiny little head and those big broad shoulders. Perhaps the legs could have been a bit longer below the knees, but I guess it adds to that look of stocky reliability. Open up his chest and we've got this really nicely sculpted inner chamber with a matrix you can remove, look at, and then put right back again. Optimus's hands are too big to really do anything with it, so thanks. Cheers. He's boxy, he's reasonably poseable, and does feel solid for the most part, though the plastic in certain places, like the chest windows, have the same thin consistency and feel of half a Kinder Egg. The biggest offenders are definitely the hollow thighs, and when you turn the arms around, well, you know, you make your mind up whether you think this is for you or not. You know, it's not a deal breaker for me, but it's definitely the worst features on the toy. Accessories are a little bit odd, but they do bring a lot of character. You know, pop off the right forearm and you can replace that with this honking great gun, and that's pretty wild, isn't it? And I can hear you thinking, you know, you're going, oh, Gavin, where do you put his fist when you're doing this? Well, up his arse. Yet there's a wee port for plugging the leftover limb right into thermometer lane. This fact alone was the thing that tipped me over the edge into getting this guy. We also have this giant axe and it's very ostentatious, isn't it? Although it looks like mine has ringworm, unfortunately. Still, you can split it apart and have Optimus work the shaft. And plus it can fold out from this fire axe look to this big double-edged effort. You know, I'll be honest, I think I prefer the first one. What do you think? Transforming Optimus is where you start to feel that light plastic come into play. The second you pull the shoulders apart to initiate the transformation, you'll feel it. You're know, moving the arms into place, spinning that grill around and bringing it down. It all feels very thin and insubstantial. Not enough that it's going to break, but enough to pull away from that premium feel you might expect from Studio Series. Still, once things are squared away and tabbed together, there's no issue with the toy feeling fragile or rickety. This thing is a brick, and it feels like it could be hurled through the window of an ice cream van cracking the glass on the slushy machine. It's very satisfying, this smooth oblong on wheels, and I really do like the vehicle mode design. No concession for humans or being a vehicle, it's just the way for this burly boy to get around, and I love it. I do wish the back end was a little cleaner, those obvious fists at the back could surely have been dealt with in a more elegant way, but it's a small thing. You can plonk the gun on top, and indeed the axe on top of that. It's messy, but at least it gives you some kind of solution for everything to be stored in each mode. The first time transforming Prime back, I accidentally left him like this, without the shoulders being rotated properly, and I have to say, I think I prefer it this way. I had a friend over, they did the same thing. I think I might end up displaying them like this. Another cool feature is that you can use the same accessories on other toys from the same line, like War for Cybertron Bumblebee here, and I might do a short on him, maybe. He's pretty good, he's not as good, but he has a sword and that's something. You can use Bumblebee's accessories on Prime, and vice versa, which is quite fun if you're easily amused like me. I went from being really unsure about Optimus here to becoming quite the advocate for him. It's not perfect, but the downsides are hugely outweighed by the benefits. If you're still on the fence, I don't know what else I can say, you're beyond help in this regard. Also, it's been long enough where I can tell you all, like and subscribe to this channel, you know, we're close to 10k subs, and for some reason that's important to me, so either hit a like on the video or subscribe. You know, I used to say this every 80 episodes, and it's been longer than that, so shut the fuck up and do it. Thanks, bye!